Most of you know Tina Zaccardi. She's been with us a few times now. We're very fortunate to have Tina join us. Sorry, my, my internet connection is not that good. So it keeps um, hiccuping. Freezing? Yeah, my, yeah, a little bit. I don't know what it is today. <clears throat> well, I made you a co-host, so that should at least, as long as your connection is okay, everyone should be able to see and hear you. Good, okay, yep, sounds good. I'm not sure. If I will leave it to you to start, and I'm also going to mute myself because maybe doing both will help. And if everyone, I, can well, I mean, you can try that, that, but yeah, that would help. Okay. So I guess you want to get started. I guess we'll get started. So thank you all for joining us this afternoon. It's kind of chilly outside, so it's nicer to be inside than it is to be outside today. So. Um, Today we are making a Bush de Noel, or as some of us know it as a Yule log. It's usually a rolled um, cake with some sort of filling and some sort of frosting on it. And they tr try and making it um, either abstract or more true to form, like a, like a log. Um, so we're gonna jump right in. And there's just one little bitty correction. I had listed in the ingredients baking powder. It's actually baking soda. We are dealing with a, an acid, which is the cocoa powder. So that's why we're using um, baking soda instead of baking powder. But a lot of the, uh, the lift we're gonna get from egg whites and whipping the egg yolks really good. So just kind of adding that baking soda just as a little fail safe to get a little extra you know, rise in, in that cake. So the first thing we're gonna start with is we're gonna separate our eggs because we're, we're gonna whip them up separately. And what I like to do is we've got one for the yolks, one for the whites, and I have a little bowl here that I'm gonna crack the egg that I'm gonna crack the eggs into because especially with the whites, if you get even a little bit of um, yolk or fat into the whites, they're really not gonna beat up to their full volume. And what I like to do is I like to take um, a little white vinegar and wipe the bowl so that way you know that there's no fat in that bowl at all. So we're gonna start um, cracking our eggs and separating them. And kind of go, that's the back and forth method to shell. Sometimes that doesn't work very good because the shell sometimes will break the yolk and you'll have a big mess. So a lot of times your hands are your best tool And just kind of shake it a little bit. And that works pretty good. So um, I think you can just tell uh, Giovanna in the chat box, or I th think there's a, um, where you can raise your hand. Is anyone actually baking along today? So I'm not gonna rush through this if we have people baking with us today. And Giovanna can let me know if people are baking. Yeah, I don't see anyone, anyone's okay. hand. Yes, Josephine Moore is baking, okay. Oh, great, okay, good. Is your, make sure your oven is preheated to 350. So when we're ready to put the cake in, it's all up to temperature. And again, you notice uh, it, it's good. If I were to get some egg yolk in, in here, you're not wasting all the eggs that you've separated already. And I've got one more to go. And Jess Ross is also baking with you today. So you have at least two people. Hey, oh my God, so exciting. Okay. Turn my hands off a little bit. This is our last light. And we're gonna set the yolks aside just for a little bit. So to the whites, we're gonna add a little bit of cream of tartar, which stabilizes the egg whites. And we're gonna use, for the egg whites, we're gonna use the, the whip attachment. If you, if, 
If you don't have a, a, a whisk attachment and you're using it by hand, that the regular beaters are, are fine. Uh, I'm but, I'm in the butter cream yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Is that a question? <laughs> I just wanted to see if I'm looking at the right recipe. Okay, great. Yeah, it's the buttercream. Okay. okay. So we're gonna get this going and chew it. We're gonna let it go until it gets kind of frothy. I wish I had an overhead camera for this. We got a two tablespoons of sugar that we're gonna add to it gradually. And we're gonna whip it until we get thick peaks and glossy. You have to be careful with egg whites because you can over whip them and then they get kind of foamy. You'll, you'll, you'll know it when it happens. It almost looks like soap stuff instead of smooth and glossy. We're just gonna add this a little at a time. And I have this all the way up as the highest speed it can go. Add a little bit more sugar. A little bit more. I know there's a lot of components to this. Um, like you can do a couple things ahead of time. You can do the um, buttercream frosting ahead of time, and you can even store it in a container on your on your counter because that really doesn't have to be refrigerated. Um, other than that. Um, you can whip your cream like right before you're baking and stick it in the fridge. I wouldn't do it like a day before, I do it the day of and put it back in the fridge because that's what we're filling this with. So just a plain, lightly sweetened whipped cream. I'm gonna add just a little bit more. And we're gonna give them a little look-see. Okay, so we kind of have soft, a little soft peaks right now. It kind of bends over. I'm just going to whip it like another couple of seconds. And I think that might be good. Just about another 10, 15 seconds. Let's see how we want. Yeah, see? See how it stands up? That's what you want to see. You don't want to go any farther than that. We're going we're to set this aside because we're going to use it in a little bit. So now we have our egg yolks. And to our egg yolks, we're adding sugar. And I'm just looking at my recipe just to make sure we get everything in there. We're going to add some salt, some vanilla extract and vegetable oil. Um, the vegetable oil is great because um, it almost comes almost like a chiffon and it makes it nice and moist, the cake, and so it doesn't dry out and it doesn't crack when you roll it, which is what we, we don't want any cracks when you roll it. I'm gonna stick this on here. We're gonna just whip the, the heck out of it. So you want it to almost like double in size. You're gonna see that it's gonna get really um, pale and yellow colored and it's gonna you know, kind of double in volume. There's a question about what type of vegetable oil you use. I'm using um, just vegetable oil. I don't, I'm not using olive oil or anything like this. I think it's um, like Western vegetable oil. I mean, if, all you have, if, if the other thing you have is olive oil and it's a, a light olive oil, um, you might be able to get away with that, but you don't want it too, too fruity. It's, we're putting chocolate in it, so it might cover up the flavor of the olive oil, but I just use regular vegetable oil. I want it to go pretty good. Another so while part. that's going, yeah. I'm sorry, oh, another question. Do the eggs need to be room temperature? And is avocado oil okay to use? 
Um, I think you might be able to get away with avocado oil. I've never tried it, but the fact that we're doing chocolate, chocolate's a really strong flavor, so it may kind of override the avocado. You could, you could try it. I've never tried it before. And as far as the eggs, um, two tips. The eggs actually separate better when they're, I find it better when they're cold, um, but you do want to use um, room temperature eggs. Take them out like an hour before you're ready to do them, or you can separate them, cover them with like saran wrap and let them, you know, fit. Okay, so this is getting really thick and I'll show you what it looks like. Everybody can see that's like getting really, really thick. And that's what you, you want to see. The sugar is getting dissolved. It's mixing all up with those eggs. It's going to be maybe another couple of seconds. While that's going, we're going to whisk, um, whisk together our cake flour, our cocoa powder, and just a little bit of baking soda. And I do this because the, the cake flour and the cocoa powder will sometimes have a lot of lumps and you want to get that out of there because they'll probably just stay as lumps when you put them in with the eggs and you don't want that um, when you bite into your cake. And there we go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get some milk. We have already measured out. And we're going to add about um, half the flour to this, the flour mixture that we, that we uh, sifted together. Dawn T has a question. Can you use yep. Dutch processed cocoa powder? Yeah, you can, you can. We're gonna mix this up. Make sure you scrape down the sides of your mix, mixer. You really want to make sure that everything's incorporated, that we don't have any um, egg on the bottom. You know, that's what usually happens. Nothing gets mixed up at the bottom. And we're going to add our milk. And continue to mix. And then we're going to add the rest of the dry ingredients. Add a little in there. I'm gonna mix that up. I'll do a quick little cleanup. <laughs> okay. This is almost done. Give it a good scrape. If there's anything left on the sides, any flour or anything, just make sure that it's all combined. So then to this, we're not going to use the machine anymore. We are going to use just our spatula and we're going to fold in the egg whites. I'm going to do it a little at a time. So we're going to take a little bit of the egg whites and we're just kind of going to stir it in very gently because you want to lighten that mixture up. So that when you do add the rest of the egg whites, you're not deflating it because you have to really mix it. So when you fold, you kind of run your spatula down the middle and just bring it up and over. Really scrape out down the bottom so you get everything incorporated. Okay, and we're going to add the rest of our egg whites. Okay. 
Yeah. And we're just going to fold, gently fold it in. I know it's kind of hard to see. Trying my best. Okay. And you want to kind of keep, keep it light. You don't want to use a heavy hand. You want to just fold it over. And you know that um, you're done mixing when you don't see any more kind of white streaks of the egg white in your mixture. Then you know that it's, it's good and mixed. Make sure you just scrape out the bottom and kind of get everything on the bottom up over the top. As I can see, I've got some of that chocolate mixture still on the bottom. Okay. I think we need just a couple more strokes and we'll be done. How is everybody doing that's baking along? How far along are they? See if we're almost at the same point. So I think we're good. Still nice and light, still nice and fluffy. Does anyone want to share? I got a, a, I'm sorry. They're doing? Yeah, no, if anyone <laughs> wanted to share their progress with us. So what I have here is a, a better known as a half sheet pan. Um, it's usually about 16 by 12 inches. I found they kind of vary. Some of them are 17 by 12, but any, anything that's labeled half sheet pan should be okay. It may come just a tad bit thinner if it's bigger, but that's okay. So I'm gonna spray it with whatever your favorite baking spray is. You could even do it with butter. I'm gonna line it with parchment. That's gonna help this come out nice and easy when we turn it over. And I'm just gonna give a quick spray on the paper. Let me get a spatula. Okay. We're just there's gonna a, core the whole thing. Yeah. Did we have somebody a question, have a question about yes, there's a question for you about the spray that you're using. Oh, okay. This is um actually I got it at Stu Leonard for anybody that lives locally. It's called professional uh bake cleans it all purpose. It's got a little bit of like flour in it. And I've been using it for a while now and it's nice. It's really nice. And at the pan with the, the baking pan with the flour it does the same thing. It has a little, little flour in it. So I like it. This is good. So I like that. I'm just going to just dump the whole thing in. But you can see that. And Jess mentioned that they are behind. <laughs> so, oh, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Okay, we'll get this all out of here. I want to make sure we get it all. <laughs> we worked hard to make it. We wanted to get it all in the pan. Okay. Now we're just going to take a spatula and spread it out as even as you can the whole pan. There we go. So this goes into a, a 350 degree oven. And it bakes for about 10 to 12 minutes. I'm going to set the timer for 10 minutes. I just guess my, my oven is getting a little wonky on me. It's, decides to shut itself off sometimes and it might be running a little hot. And so I think it's time for a new oven. <laughs> okay. Well, this looks good. It's all scraped nice and neat. Okay. Make sure it's as even as you can possibly get it. I'm gonna throw this in the oven. I'm going to set it for 10 minutes and we'll check on it in 10 minutes and see how it's doing. Okay. So before we get um, going with the, with the fillings, um, does anybody have any, any questions? This is a good time. We have a little downtime right now. 
Does anybody want to ask any questions or um, we'll let people catch up if they're baking with us? Connie wants to know if you can share what was your prize from the baking show? So my prize was a um, Waterford uh, crystal cake plate that said greatest uh, Great American Baking Show on it, holiday edition. No money, just a plate. But we all knew that going in. So it was just, a, it, you know, it was just the, just so great to just be able to, to be there and, and compete in the tent. So that was a lot of fun. Very nice. Any other, any other questions anybody has? I'm just going to do a little quick cleanup while everybody, while we're waiting for it to bake. Another question for you, Tina. Will you yeah, compete yeah. in any other shows? Um, I don't know. You know, the ones, one of them that work are very different. Um, I might, I don't know. I'll see. I'll see. I, I may, you know, apply for one of them. I haven't yet, um, but uh, I don't know. They, I mean, they, everybody has a really fun time when they do them, but it's just different. It's just different. Okay. And then a question about uh, whether you recommend turning on the convection while baking this. I have never turned the. I've never baked this with a convection. I've just baked it. Um, with the regular heat. I do have convection, but I just baked it with regular heat. So I don't know how it would, would do. It would probably take less time. Um, but other than that, you can, you can give it a try and see how it goes. So for this, I decided, um, to fill it with a, just a lightly sweetened whipped cream. Um, the cake is kind of rich and the buttercream, I'm using a chocolate, like American chocolate buttercream is rich. So I wanted something a little lighter than more buttercream or like for say like a mousse or a, a pastry cream. I thought it would be nice and light um, to use the whipped cream. So we're gonna, um, I'm gonna make, actually make the whipped cream and we can stick it in the fridge when it's done and we'll wait until that comes out. So I've got my cream, it's nice and cold. And you want it to be nice and cold. In fact, you can even stick your, um, your bowl and your mixer in the freezer and the refrigerator if you want it to be really cold. And to this, we're gonna add a little bit of vanilla and just a little bit of um, confectioner sugar. And you can make this as sweet or not sweet as, as you like it. You can add two tablespoons, three tablespoons. Um, it depends on how you like your whipped cream. I don't like it too terribly sweet, so. And be careful when you're whipping your cream, especially if you're doing it um, in a mixer like this, because it can go from cream to almost butter if you stop, stop watching it. Not that that's a bad thing, but we're not, we don't need butter <laughs> as a filling. I'm gonna start it on low. You gotta keep an eye on it because you don't wanna get it too whipped up. Another question, what is your favorite yeah. item to bake? Oh, my favorite thing to bake. Um, I love cookies, I just any kind of cookie. I just, I just love cookies. I love anything that's like bite size or single size or miniature, anything. Um, I do love, um, I do love tarts, like a good lemon curd tart. 
that's one of my favorite things to, to make. I just love anything, anything lemon. If it's not chocolate, I'll, I'll take lemon. <laughs> okay, this is starting to get thick. probably make the night before and you're going to serve it. I wouldn't do it any farther in advance than that. Like put it all together. You can store it in the fridge. Take a look at this cream. It's a little um, not quite there yet. Let me see if I can show you. We want it just a little bit Stiffer than that. Question about the whipped cream. Do you ever stabilize the whipped cream to make it last longer? You know, I know there's ways to do that. I just, I just don't. Um, when I make whipped cream, it's usually I'm going to use it right when I make it, or like I'm filling this, and usually this cake doesn't last very long. It's you know a day or two, and that's it. I, I just um. That's just my personal preference. I mean, you can. I know some people put like gelatin in and um, other additives. Okay, I think we're good. Yeah, that's good. I'm gonna need that. So I'm gonna just cover this. I'm just going to keep it in the fridge. Check on the cake. Okay, it looks good. It's got about three minutes to go. How are we doing? Does everybody that's baking along have it in the oven with us? I don't know if they're that far along. Okay. Does anyone want to share? Anybody? You can unmute yourself if you feel more comfortable that oh, way. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. So I did a dairy free. Hi. Um, hi. I did a dairy free version and I, um, for the cream, for the heavy, uh, for the cream, I made, instead of the heavy cream, I made, I made the, hev the heavy cream with silken tofu and, um, oh, and soy hey. milk. Just because I have dairy free people. How about the. House. Yeah. Did you use soap for the cake? You used the soy milk. Yes. Yeah. So for okay. the for the, I think for the cream. For the cream, and then oh, and for then the cream. Oh, for milk, I used almond milk. So I just did it dairy free. Oh yeah, I was I was just gonna say that almond milk would probably be a, a, a good substitute to use for this. Good idea. Yeah, very good. So I, I just so then um people. So when we make the buttercream, you could probably use a margarine or a, a butter substitute for the for the buttercream because we're not I, really I baking with it. Butter. We're just I whipping it up. In it. Good. Fine. Good. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Good. Excellent. And Jess Ross wrote, she's about five to eight minutes behind you. Smile. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> and Josephine Moore is also behind. Good. Okay. Not good, but she's just going to catch up. I know she will. But A plus so, for doing this, <laughs> for, for keeping yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. So when we take this out, um, it's kind of like muscle memory. We are going to take a, um, a linen dish towel. I, I wouldn't use um, like the terry cloth ones that have a little nubbies on them. You want to use something that's linen, something smooth. So I like to put it down on the table. And what I do is I'm going to dust it with powdered sugar. And then when that comes out of the oven, we're going to dump it right out. And we're actually, oh, it's buzzing. We might be able to take it out. Let's see. 
Oh, good. It got nice and puffy. I'm just going to let it go like another minute while we're doing this. So I'm going to dust it with powdered sugar, and then we're going to gently roll it in the dish towel so that it cools already rolled. So it kind of it's going to remember to roll back up after we kind of unroll it a little and put the filling in there. But it definitely is, um, I would use a linen towel. Don't use one of the terry cloth ones. And I'll just uh, use an, a whisk to do this. Now, it's chocolate, so the white's gonna show, but uh, so normally if I'm doing a roll like this that the cake is going to show that we're not gonna put a frosting on it, I would use cocoa powder so that you don't have uh, you know, white powdered sugar all over the, the chocolate cake. but we're covering it so it doesn't matter. And this prevents it from sticking to the towel. That's why we're doing the sugar. What do we need? I'm gonna reuse. This sideways, so I think you might be able to see it better. Okay. I can just mess with the camera a little. There we go. Okay, let me go get this out of the oven. So it went the whole 12 minutes today. And so everybody can see that, right? I'm just gonna actually move this out of the way for a second. But even though we sprayed it or buttered it, you know, it, sometimes it sticks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a spatula or you can use a knife and just go around the edges and just make sure that the edges are pulled away from the pan because we don't want it to kind of get stuck halfway when we when we dump it out. There we go. Okay. I think we are good. And the and the paper is releasing from the bottom, which is what we want. back so everybody can see it. So this kind of takes a little bit of a leap of faith. You just gotta go for it. And stick it right on the edge and just, <laughs> you can see all the sugar went everywhere. And we're gonna take the pan off. And we're gonna peel the paper off. Very gently, just be really careful with this because you don't want to rip all your cake off. And you want to do this when it's, when it's hot. You want to roll it up when it's warm because if you wait, then it's not going to want to roll. And just take it off nice and easy. See how I'm doing this. Find out doing it like this is better than doing it like this. And just be care just be careful just have patience and just it'll come off just nice and slow there we go i'm just going to fold up some of the towel and then we're going to gently start to roll and i'm rolling from one of the short sides and just gently we don't want it too tight because we want room for filling. Just kind of loosely roll it. There we go. Okay. And then we've got like a seam over here. 
Well, there we are. We have it rolled. And we're going to put it on a rack and let it cool. Here we go. I'm just going to let it sit a while, let it cool. Josephine was so the wondering. The next thing we we'll do, yeah. Sorry, if we yep. could, if we could just take a yep. little pause, because I guess she's trying to catch up. And uh... actually, does everyone want to take um, like a fifteen-minute break, and then we'll come back, and that should be cool, and then we're ready to make our filling and put it all together. Does that sound good to everybody? Is that okay, Giovanna? It's fine with me. Je Jess says good. We have our roll that's cooling, still a little warm. I might just pop it in the freezer while we're making the, uh, the frosting. And we're gonna make the buttercream now. And it's just a standard American buttercream. It's got butter, it's got confectioner's sugar, it has cocoa, a little pinch of salt, and some vanilla extract, and a, and a little cream to thin it out if it's, if it's too thick, if you, you want to get a nice spreading consistency. So I put the butter and confectioner sugar already in there. And this is one of those things you can kind of dump everything in the, in the pool, but the cream, we want to save that for the end. So I've got sugar and butter, and we're going to put a pinch of salt in there, and a little bit of vanilla. And I'm just going to eyeball it about a quarter cup of cocoa. Is that right? Yes, it is. That looks about right. We are going to just whip this up. Start slow because you don't want the powdered sugar to go all over the place. And you can increase. Is there someone? Where's my mouse? Where's my mouse go? Somebody in the waiting room? Oh, yeah. There you go. Okay. I think I don't know if you can see. I can see it. I don't know if you can see it on screen, but we're getting a little, little powdered sugar smoke coming out of there. Okay, so this looks a little dry. So I'm going to add just a little bit of cream as it's going. Just a little to get it going. Okay, I'm going to add just a little bit more so we get a nice spreading consistency and I'll show you. A little more. I'm going to give a good scrape, make sure we get everything incorporated. Here we go. Okay, feels a little, I'm, I'm, you know, scraping it, it feels just a tiny bit stiff. I just want it to be able to spread a little easier. So we're going to add just a little more cream. I'm going to get it going again. Okay. Let's take a look and see how it it's a super, you know, buttercream. It's super simple to put together, the American buttercream. Okay, that looks good. I think I can be able to spread that pretty good. Tastes good. I'm going to leave that on there just in case I have to just whip it up a little bit more. I'm going to clear a couple of things off. So I've got a little something to show you. It wasn't in the recipe but they're just too adorable um, not to show you. So I made some little meringue mushrooms to go, that'll be growing on your Yule log. So what I did was I, um, I piped little domes for the tops of the mushrooms and then stems for the bottoms. So what I like to do is, so they come to kind of a little point so what I like to do is just kind of make a little hole in the bottom of the mushroom. Okay, and we're gonna take just the tiniest little bit of buttercream and we're gonna stick 
this together. And I don't know if everybody can see that. There's our little mushroom. I'm gonna put it on the tray. And I'll do a couple more. So in order to make these, you need um, one egg white, a quarter cup of sugar, a little pinch of um, cream of tartar and just a little pinch of salt. And you can whisk that up like we did with the um, egg whites. But those are a lot of egg whites. It's gonna be a different consistency. It's gonna be more glossy. It's gonna almost be like marshmallows. And you take a piping bag and you can pipe with the same tip. You can use pipe the little mounds and pipe the stems and um, put them in a 200 degree oven for two hours and just let them go and let them dry out. And these are just, just so darn cute. Let me take another one. And there we go. These are just so cute. Yeah, these um, would have been just taken too long to actually do real time because they do take a, a long time to bake. And they were a little bit different. The mushrooms aren't all the same. We have a question. If you can repeat the recipe for the mushrooms, please. Sure. It's, um, you can uh, do one egg white, a quarter cup of, uh, a quarter cup of granulated sugar, a pinch of cream of tartar and a pinch of salt. And you can whip it up, start whipping your egg whites until they get foamy. And then you gradually add the sugar in a little at a time until the mixture is really nice and glossy and smooth and holds, holds a bit of a, a peak. And then you bake them at 200 degrees for about two hours and keep them away from humidity. After you make them, it's a good idea to um, put them or put them in an airtight container after they're cooled. So the humidity is not, the, not a meringue's friend at all. There's our little mushroom. I'm just gonna move some of these out of the way. And what I like to do is dust them a little with some cocoa powder. Okay. I think everybody can see here we have our little mushroom. They're just so darn cute. They, they really are just adorable. Okay, I'm gonna put this off to the side and I'm gonna get my roll. This feels cool. We're gonna unroll it. It's still a little warm, but I think we might be able to get away with it. Let me get the whipped cream. Yeah, it's still slightly warm. Might wait just a few seconds. Is any while we're waiting? Does anybody have any questions about anything? I just don't want to put the cream on a on a hot on a hot roll. So you notice we don't have any cracks. We'll so we'll hope it stays that way. We'll let this cool. Any questions so far? You can unmute if you'd like to. It's up to you. Yeah, if you just want to unmute and ask a question or let me know how far you are in the process, if you're baking with us. My husband walked in and he said, anytime you need a taster, he'd be happy to volunteer. He'd sacrifice himself. I have a, <laughs> I have a lot of those volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> I told him you lived in East, we, you lived down the real road of East in East Chester. So we thought, okay, tell it. I know where she lives. On oh, the okay. 
I'll be right over if I have any any extras or anything. <laughs> So there's a question about what you're using under the roll. Is that parchment paper or what did you line the pan? No, it, oh, I lined the pan with parchment, but what I rolled it up in was a linen dish towel. Okay. okay. Dusted with powdered sugar to keep it from sticking. I wouldn't use um, like the nubby kind of dish, you know, the terry cloth kind of dish towel. Make sure that it's a linen, a linen towel. And there's just, some really, uh, well, Sarah Latable closed at Ridge Hill, uh, but they used to have some really cute patterns on their linen towels. I know. You can so still sad. order online. They're still open online. So. Yes, you can You can order online. So Jess. Okay. Any, any other questions? Well, Jess had a comment that she just finished frosting the log rolled up 10 minutes. She rolled it up already. It was cool, huh? Is mine still warm? Nothing's That's melting, is it? Okay, wait. She's writing something else. She said, "Oh, okay." Log it is in the linen. Okay, log is in the linen. Okay. Got. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So it's cooling off. I mean, if you want to pop it in the fridge, you can. Okay. So it's rolled up. Yeah, I think we're we're okay. We're I think we're good. Good to go. It's, you know, it's, oh, it's still a little warm. I just don't want the cream to melt all over the place. <laughs> we can do one or two, um, one or two more mushrooms. So when you pipe the mushrooms, um, I can show you the tip that I used. The tip that I use to pipe the mushrooms is a Wilton number 12. It looks like about a quarter of an inch round in diameter. So what you do is um, you hold it vertical, you right up and down to the, to the sheet and you know press the meringue out and it will kind of spread out into a dome and then just kind of pull it off to the side. For the stems, you want to kind of move it up so that you get something that's a little more straight. The sides are a little more straight. You're not getting kind of like a, a ball shape. So, okay, I think we're gonna, we're gonna go for it. So we're gonna take the whipped cream. And we're gonna put it on there. You don't have to go to the edges because as we not you can leave like maybe about a quarter of an inch because as we roll it it's going to kind of push it out same thing with the end and we're going to roll up from the same side that we started i know i had um let me turn it around because i had it this way before a question go to the end Yes. A question came up uh, from Josephine, who's at the same step as Jess. Will the cream melt if it's not completely cool? Yes. Wait till it gets cool. You can do this when once we get off here. Don't, don't ruin all your hard work by doing it. Mine is, mine is pretty cool now because I had it in the freezer. Um, but don't, don't ruin it by doing it too soon. Let it stay rolled up until, you know, it takes about... 20, 25 minutes to really cool down. But if you want to, you know, quicken it, you can put it in the fridge. All right, so we're going to roll this now very gently. You don't want to squish it. I'm going to roll this up. Okay, there we go. Tina, you said about 20 minutes in the freezer or it, would it be less in the freezer? No, 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 not 20. I would say it's like 20 minutes on the counter. Oh, on the counter. 20, 25 how minutes long in the on freezer? the counter. I had mine in there for like five or 10 minutes. Don't, you know, don't get it to the it's hard. Just, just, just enough to cool it down. And you can kind of unroll it and feel if the inside is like, I, I unrolled mine and let it sit open for a while to get it cool. Just feel with your hand. Make sure that it's cool. Okay, so 
a lot of people will leave leave the lodges long. So I think the picture that I sent to Giovanna, I had cut a piece off and put it like it was a little, like it was a piece of branch, like with two kind of branches coming off of one. Let me get out my nice sharp knife. And we're just gonna cut um, a piece off like this. And we're gonna take the bigger piece, put it on the plate, just a little off center. And then we are gonna take this and put it right there. So you can see it kind of looks like a big branch. We're going to take our buttercream. See, I'm going to whip it just a couple more seconds. Another question. How oh. maybe, how maybe yeah, in the rest is, of, oh, go. oh, I'm so sorry. Maria. Oh, did okay. it on a sure, I'll tell you. I did it on a diagonal. So you're doing like two inches on one end and four inches on the other. Uh, like a diagonal. And how how big is your cake plate? How many inches is your cake plate? <laughs> a 12 inch in diameter cake plate. Okay. I cut about two I got on a diagonal. Right, let's see how this is. Okay, I think we're looking really good with this now. A couple of people are gonna have really good desserts for dinner tonight, I can see. to start by taking a little and kind of filling in right here where the two of them meet. And then we're going to cover the whole thing. It looks like a big old branch. And don't worry about these edges. We're gonna cut them a little, make them a little smoother. I'm gonna cover this whole thing. And then we're gonna show you how to make it look like a branch with some bark on it. So what you can do is if you want to keep your your plate nice and neat, you probably put some wax paper or parchment paper underneath and then after you're frosted you can you can pull it out. I'm just going to use a little paper towel and clean it up when it's done. I'm going to do this side. Oh, I have company. You might be able to see him in a little bit when he walks by. No. Not on camera. One of my cats is in, in here today. He wants to go out, but it's so cold. Okay. And just cover the whole thing. And don't worry about how it looks right now because we're gonna we're gonna make it pretty. Make sure you get it all the way to the bottom, all the way to the edges. Just a little at a time. Okay. 
I mean, if you're waiting for yours to cool, you could go ahead. I mean, if you haven't made your frosting already, you can go ahead and make it. And that can definitely sit. But just cover it with some uh, plastic, the bowl with some plastic wrap, and you can definitely let that sit. A couple more spots, I think. A little over here. I think we have a little over here we need to do, right in between. Okay. Anybody have any questions while I'm while I'm frosting? I feel like we're we're kind of silence right now because we're just we're frosting our cake. I think everyone's mesmerized <laughs> by the beauty of the Mesmer log. Mesmerized. I'm sorry, I'm not even looking. I'm like the looking beauty at the of cake. the log like, cake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we just need a little more in here. Okay. We have it, we might as well use it, right? Let's get it. <laughs> okay, so this is all covered right now. It looks really good. Okay. Again, I'm just gonna get some paper towel. Oh, right here. Just make sure we clean it up. I'm going to do the side. Okay. So all you like to do is um, like this side, you can leave it kind of rustic or you can cut a nice slice off and get it smooth on both that and end. But to get that bark look, you take a fork and you kind of just make just run it all, run it with the tines of the fork. Maybe you think a log would look. There you go. And you know what, I forgot to do some, but what makes kind of nice moss for you kind of sprinkle at the bottom, if you ground up some pistachio nuts, that looks really, really nice. So I don't know if everybody can see our log. Does it look like a log, everybody? <laughs> it looks gorgeous. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our little mushrooms, kind of put them where you think that they would grow on your log. Here we go. Maybe kind of one down here. another one down here and what's a yule log without a tiny bit of snow and there we go Hope everybody can, can kind of get a look and see that. It's a masterpiece. <laughs> and oh, thank you. Gary says beautiful. So there, we, so there we go. Like I said, you can cut, if you want to cut a piece off right here, or use a serrated knife and get it a little more even, you can do that. Or you can put frost, you can cover that and with frosting, whatever, whatever, like make your log the way you want it, the way you want it to look. But there you go. Wow. There you go. 
Let's put a little another mushroom there. There you go. Amazing, amazing. And you got what a what a beautiful um, centerpiece for your you know Christmas dessert or holiday dessert or your wintertime dessert. There's no reason why we can't have these in in um, in January and February. There's snow on the ground. It's cold. There's logs everywhere. Why not? <laughs> Very nice. Happy winter solstice. There you go. Thank Is you. that Donna? I love you, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope everybody had a really great time this afternoon. I know I really did. I had a great time putting this together. So it is uh, actually these are I mean, I've done a couple of um, segments on some morning shows and they're really fast. It's like four or five minutes. Got Put everything together and have everything prepped before but this is really nice because you can do it at a normal pace and people can bake along and it's 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 really fun it's fun for me so i hope it was fun for you guys yes and it was for me too it made me a little hungry good. <laughs> and now i want a cup of coffee but it's all it's all good does anyone want to share know what? anything I, Any go ahead sorry if, if you guys have made them, I would love, I would love for you to like take pictures of them and, you know, DM them to me either on Instagram, um, the Italian cookie or on Facebook, Tina Zaccardi Bakes, or you can send them via my email. I have a little, you know, contact me section. You can, you know, I don't know if you can put a picture in there, but just let me know that you baked it and, and um, you can send the picture um, through like Instagram or Facebook. So. And you could also email it to me if it, you know, if you don't mind, I'll yeah. share it and, and people can see all oh, the that would be great. things that we're creating from the yeah. comfort of our home. Your kitchen must smell so nice. Right? <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, Giovanna, I can actually bring you a slide, bring you some if you want, because we're not going to eat all of it. There's just the three of us <laughs> in my house. Well, hmm. it's very tempting, very tempting. Mm. Mm. Exactly, exactly. But thank you for the offer. Very nice. Yeah. Well, and then would you freeze this? Let's say, well, not freeze it maybe, but you know, it. let's say you wanted to make it for Christmas, but how, you don't want to make it too far in advance, right? Because then it'll lose its freshness. Um, I know everybody's crazy at Christmas. So what I would recommend if you want to have it for Christmas day, you could make the buttercream, um, like let's say the evening of the 23rd, um, and then put it together in the morning of the 24th and it should be fine in the fridge until the next day. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Excellent. All right. If no one has any other questions, but if you put it, Oh, so sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. You were going to say something if you put it. Oh, if you if you make the buttercream and put it in the fridge, take it out, let it sit on the counter and kind of whip it up a little to get it to spreading consistency. Okay. Very good. So if there or no you can put it in a in a or you can put it in a Tupperware container and you can leave it overnight on the on the counter. That's okay too, just as long as it's sealed. Okay. Wow. Okay. You make it look so easy. But my kitchen would be a mess <laughs> right now. <laughs> so well, I have everything prepped nice and bowls and everything. I don't so know. you know, usually when I'm baking, I'm scooping right out of the container and everything. So <laughs> you know what you're doing. That's why. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, thank you so very much. Uh, this love this um, love all your baking programs but um that's therapy in and of itself watching <laughs> it really <laughs> is and sometimes even just watching mm. even watching not even baking, just watching can right. be can be very therapeutic or very relaxing yes. it's a good way to spend the afternoon so very much so well thank you everyone for joining us stay tuned we'll see what we can whip up for 2021 if tina's yes permits. Yes. We'll love to have you back. Yep. And um, for, for all of you foodies, we're hoping to start a new cookbook club. So uh, it's, it'll be Ooh, food, food Like bake from like one big, yeah. I love that. And That's it'll great. be periodic. Pre, uh, every three months, we have a food historian who'll be helping us with that. And it'll feature a different cookbook each time so fantastic oh that's us. great yeah we're excited about it so uh, we're hoping to have nick sharma join us in january for his 
cookbook. It's a debut cookbook on Indian food. So but we'll, oh, nice. let, we'll let everybody know and uh, keep checking our events page and follow Tina on Facebook, the Italian cookie, right? <laughs> And oh, that's Instagram. And oh, on I'm Facebook, yes. it's Tina Zaccardi Bakes. Bakes. Oh, that's okay. Tina's okay. <laughs> so people know where to find you. And thank you. Thank you, everybody. So that concludes the program. Thank you. Today. Thanks for having me. This